Yeah, jo- John see? Ziegler is here. Uh, he's the he's basically the guy that spearheaded and, d- and did everything that made this movie possible. We said it this morning when we first opened up the microphones, and I got to tell you something. Driving home last night, I was so angry. Mm-hmm. That I had missed so much because mm-hmm. uh, I consider exactly. myself fairly learned, you know. Yeah. I, I re- especially with Sarah Palin because I sure. love her and and, right. and you know uh, I, I I fought for her and sure. I continue to fight for her. So right. I really thought I was kind of up right. on. I knew they were hard on her. I knew that. I didn't know how bad it was, right. but I didn't realize the love fest mm-hmm. that the media had with Barack Obama. Yeah. How blatant and obvious. I mean, they were shameless. They were, they didn't even try and hide it. Right. Well, first of all, you shouldn't feel ashamed or or anything like that because you have a life. Uh, I didn't have a life during the campaign, <laughs> oh, for, so that you could have one. I right. mean, in all seriousness, that's what I did was that I immersed myself into this because I knew someone needed to to be able to tell the full story, and it really is about context. And your reaction and Mark's reaction is very common to the film. Mm-hmm. People think they know the story, and then they watch and they go. Whoa! I had no idea it was really that bad or that extensive or mm-hmm. or that ridiculous, and it was. But I don't expect anybody to be able to follow everything. It would be physically impossible in this well, day and age. Let me ask you this: it, it, as you were putting this film together, mm-hmm. um, and you, you, I mean, what were some of the things that just made you go, "Whoa, wait a minute! Did, did they just say that? Let me run that oh. again. Did they? Did they just say what I think they said?" <laughs> and you actually kind of. I mean, you well, you actually to... mentioned one during the commercial break where I actually played it for several people to see whether or not it had the same impact on them as it did for me. And that was the night of the election itself when uh, Wolf Blitzer and Suzanne Malvo on CNN right. are discussing the campaign and they're using uh, possessives that make it sound like they're part of the Obama campaign. Right. And how Suzanne Malvo is bragging about how we made so many trips to Ohio uh, to win over class voters and it finally paid off and I'm like you got to wait hold on a second right You're, but it, but I re- and and some people think well aren't you really being you know nitpicky there no because it seeped into their consciousness right that, that that was the relevance of this they actually thought of themselves as being on the Obama team that was the one <laughs> clip from the, from your film that stuck out the most for me that I actually I remember looking at Mark and just going Jesus Christ yeah. This person... I don't think he had much to do with it. Well, uh, well <laughs> that's right. according to, to the media, he is. Oh, that's true. Well, according to <laughs> no, the he's media, above. he's in the White House. But I was, but, he's but, above but, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's you've, right. got, you've got to see this movie just to understand exactly how the, the media jumped on board with Barack Obama. And like I said, we're shameless about it. I mean, this woman is saying... You know, we went there. We campaigned. Right. We made so many stops to get the vote out, get the message out. Where we are really excited, right. and yeah. you're going, "Whoa, wait yeah. a minute! Aren't you paid by CNN?" Yeah. Right. I mean, her paycheck say you're they don't say to be Barack a journalist. Obama. Correct. Yeah. And how? And that's one of thousands of examples, almost literally thousands yeah. of examples that are in the film. I mean, the film has you know, it just its context so is everything. Many. But you know, for people here in Alaska, Bob, the point you just made, I think, is really important because when people try to evaluate, okay. The, the coverage of Sarah Palin, was it fair, and was it the real Sarah Palin? The most important thing they need to understand is the context in the national media's prism of her being a threat to their messiah. Right. That's where you need to, to that's the maybe the most important piece of this puzzle for people in Alaska to truly understand just how bad it was. It had nothing, re- not, uh, not nothing, but it... It, it started with something that had nothing to do with her. Mm-hmm. Anybody who was a threat to Obama would have probably been treated the same way. Right. And in fact, she actually handled the fire better than anybody else could possibly have imagined. Right. And, and, and I guess... You know, we can all, there's a zillion things you can say about this, but to me, the most underreported part of this is you find out an awful lot more about somebody in adversity than you do when things are going well. Sure. And to me, I actually think that this election campaign was an unbelievable success for Sarah Palin in that she revealed how much character she and her entire family really have mm-hmm. to be able to endure what they did and still stand strong. Right. And, and and so it really ticks me off when people think, well, she had her shot, she showed herself not to be uh, worthy of national office, and she goes back to Alaska to do her thing. Wait a minute! Anybody else who faced what she faced would have been 
in the fetal position on the ground in tears. Mm -hmm. Would have been done, would have been wiped out. Just the attacks on our family alone. Forget about the po the political attacks, which we show in the film, are also unfair. And that's another thing the media does, which I can't stand. When I was on the Today Show, they tried to make it sound like, well, Governor Palin takes these outrageous attacks on her family and makes it sound like that's all the media did. Is that what my film is about? Right. My, no. my film mentions that one time, moves on, mm -hmm. and goes to the issues uh, of, yeah. of political stance and how uh, things that Governor Palin said or did or, or was in favor of or against were taken out of context and used clearly as an agenda to try to destroy her candidacy because they were in love with Obama right. and mm -hmm. that she was a threat to him. Absolutely. And so that's what people in Alaska they, need to understand when they evaluate this yeah. issue. They were able to neutralize John McCain early on. They right. were able to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Sarah Palin was that shot across that bow mm -hmm. of that ship that was sailing to the White House unimpeded. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're right. As soon as she came along, they focused on her like you wouldn't believe. Right. And it, it was unreal. And by the way, you know, I'm all in favor of scrutiny. I think scrutiny is great. It's not wrong. And, and, but at least be remotely fair in the scrutiny. Factual, and, if right? You will. Right. Her scrutiny was unfair, and and Obama got none. Right. And by the way, I I, I can't believe people forget this, but uh, Obama was running for president. She was running for vice president, exactly. could, sure. could, could, exactly. uh, which, which somehow got completely lost in all of this, all under the the notion that John McCain was going to die on day three or something, mm -hmm. which, you know, by yeah. the way, hasn't happened. No, it, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, uh, there's so many telling moments in this movie, so many. Well, I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm reminded of, at, at the very end, you're interviewing this, this woman the Berkeley kid. who apparently was, was a learned person right. and totally didn't know anything about government, no. didn't know anything about Barack Obama. You, you asked, you know, who was it? that basically had uh, their candidates kicked off so they could win. Mm -hmm. uh, who yeah. was it that said that they visited 57 states? She laughed. She goes, oh, that was Palin. You're like, oh, that's some, something Palin would say. Oh, yeah, that sounds like Palin. No, that was actually Barack Obama. Right. Oh, my God. Who uh, who perjured or who, uh, you know, who, who had to leave the presidential campaign because of perjury? Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, how does that that issue get glossed over? I mean, never but, mentioned. But, but the thing <laughs> is, if, if, if Governor Palin had, had, had yeah. dropped out of a previous campaign because she plagiarized uh, right. How, how many Americans would have known about that? Sure. But that's what happened with Joe Biden. But the thing that was amazing is even after you told her all of these things, how she w was mm -hmm. misinformed, she said, yeah, but I'm still going to vote for Barack. Yeah, right. it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't changed my vote. It doesn't matter it changed my vote. Let's, go to, the, let's right. go to the phones. Hi, you're on with uh, John Ziegler, uh, the man behind Media Malpractice. Go ahead. <laughs> are you there? Are you dialing? I think it's a... Oh. Hey, guys. Yeah, yeah go ahead. At the front door trying to come see you. Okay. All right. All right. Well, go Nova, to the back. Go yeah. to the back door. Back door. That sounds yes, good. Sir. All right. Thanks, man. Nova, go to the back door. Hi, you're on with John Ziegler. It's Bob Marks. Go ahead. Hey guys. Um, I've been a, a, a long time listener, but I got to say, I, I I haven't listened as much since the whole Sarah Palin thing. Okay. Because I feel like uh, it's 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 uh it's too much. Now, are you talking about since August of last year? Since uh, since she came on the ticket. Yeah, since yeah, August I, I, of last year. I can't stand the show anymore, guys. Well, I don't care. Why? And I, it's like I, every time I tune in, no, it's, I, it's the Sarah Palin channel, and I'll take a month off, and I'll be like, hey, maybe it's good again, but no. Nope. All right. Well, and I, it's just well, like, can I, I can't, it's like one of these TV shows, you ever watch like a... Uh, Sir, you've seen one episode of a show, and then and then a year sir, later... Sir, go ahead. Sir, John. I'd like to address this. Um, a film largely about your governor was played last night and this show helped host the event if that's not newsworthy right. then what the heck is this is the this is an earthquake that hit er your state this is the biggest thing that's happened to your state in my lifetime maybe in the history of the state from a national perspective you don't think that's worthy of discussion Bob and Mark, you guys used to be cool. Okay, that's, that's uh, right. He doesn't want to address, he doesn't want to address no. the issue. I, no. that's good. I, I'm sorry we're not cool anymore. Good you luck. put your head in the sand again. Good luck listening to those other shows that are way cooler. We yeah. are, there you go. We're going to miss you sorely. Yeah. All right, Bob Mark, go ahead. Hey, guys, this is Robert. I listen because you guys are telling everybody how P Palin got screwed by the media, and, and, and it should be out there like John's doing there. Right. You know? And and I didn't learn anything new from the movie because I've been a talk show uh, uh, junkie since nine eleven. But the thing I I got it from all this is the media could have one of our enemies elected, and then we're really screwed. 
Sure. Yeah. If they wanted to. Right. Osama could be our president. Some people think they did. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. We, we, we shall see. I saw a bumper sticker the other day that said, how you liking that change now? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. I appreciate you coming out to the movie last night. I, 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 was, uh, I was astonished by some yeah. of the things I saw. I appreciate you, Robert Hayes. The, uh...